today we start with modeling of dc servo motor so the motor is a very important uh, instrument of we can say device which is useful in control applications whenever a control engineer develop any algorithm it has to verify in real time so the dc motor is a very important problem therefore there is need to study the modeling of this motor there are two types of motors ac motor and dc motor so first of all we see to what are the differences between ac motor and dc motor now if you compare the dc motor and ac motor which is the best so first of all we see the what are the advantages and the disadvantages of ac motor now about the advantages lower cost higher efficiency lower inertia maintenance is less since there is no commutator and brushes these are some advantages of uh, ac motor but there are some disadvantages because finally what is the result result we require output so we will find that that output which obtained by ac it is difficult to control and again the characteristics particular torsion characteristics is somewhat non linear therefore for analysis point of view the ac motor is not better in comparison to dc motor so what are the disadvantages ac motors are difficult to control for position control such as robotics applications as i told you that last time that uh, we have to control the position of a robotic arm so how to control it so here suppose this is an arm and this arm is there and this is the point gripper and here the gripper is picking the some object and it, it place it so what happen if you move like this so here it has to come this point so here we will find that the controlling task or moment is not so proper so that is the one disadvantage of this ac motor second the characteristics are quite non linear therefore analysis is quite difficult now what are the applications ac motor are useful for low power application because of the part uh, things that analysis is quite difficult therefore if you go for higher order system it is difficult to use this uh, uh, ac motor so in that case we will see later on the dc motor is quite better now about the dc motor the characteristics of dc motor are linear in comparison to ac motor and these motors are easier to control if you see the control aspects these motor are very easy to control then there are some disadvantages the dc motor are quite expensive due to involvement of brushes brushes and commutators see in the dc motor there is involvement of brushes and commutator and actually the size increases and again we have to maintain this brushes and commutator and therefore it is quite expensive but today due to development of the power electronics engineering a brushless motor has also come so so in other words we can say that now a dc motor are better in comparison in comparison to ac motors the application it is used for high power applications so as the controlling is quite easy therefore we have, we can uh, use this motor for higher power applications now about the servo system normally those uh, who are studying electrical machine subject normally called as motors ac motor dc motor but whenever this motor we have to use in control it has to call as servo motor what is servo servo means your output it is in terms of position velocity or accelerations so here point is servo means output is some mechanical variables like position velocity or acceleration now what is the requirement of such type of ac motor what we want that the motor once we give input motor should immediately on that is rapid acceleration from the standstill so that is the requirement of ac motor so it is written servo application dc motor is required to pro produce rapid acceleration from standstill 
the physical requirement in such type of motor are of low inertia and high starting torque. So, this is possible rapid acceleration is possible whenever there is inertia is should be less then and then we get high starting torque. So, this can be possible by reducing the armature diameter. So, we have to reduce the armature diameter with consequent increase in armature length such that the desired power output can be achieved. So, desired output can be achieved by reducing the armature diameter which consequently increase the armature length. So, you can see this is reference. So, this DC motor can be used in two modes one is called armature control mode and another is called field control mode. So, what is the difference between armature control and field control? In armature control mode we have to keep field current constant and in case of field control mode we have to keep armature current constant. Now, we have to see the modeling of DC servo motor in both cases that is in uh, armature control mode and field control mode. So, we will see this part. Okay. Now, first of all now we are developing the transfer function model of a DC servo armature control motor and afterward we will develop the stay space model of an armature control DC servo motor. So, first of all I am drawing the circuit diagram of an armature control DC servo motor. So, in a armature control DC servo motor or we say any motor this is a involvement of armature resistance then we have inductor and here is brushes these are brushes this one and this one. is armature resistance this is inductors. Then we required a field winding. So, here we say armature winding, but here we need a field winding now here is this field current E is here applied voltage. Now, here we will get a back EMF and here is the armature current. So, now when this motor will rotate it has to drive against moment of inertia and frictions. So, here is by J B and now the torque produced by the motor T m. T m T is the torque produced by the motor and here is the theta positions. Okay. Now, this is then circuit diagram of an armature control DC servo motor. Now, here main requirement is a position theta. Now, this is motor. Now, first of all we see what is the difference between the generator and motor. In generator we will get the EMF. So, how, you, how we are getting the EMF? When the conductor cuts the flux the EMF is induced the flux the how the flux is produced by the field winding. And in case of motor when the current carrying armature winding cuts the flux then EMF is induced. So, that is the basic difference between the generator and motor. In generator we get the output voltage in case of motor we get a torque. So, in case of motor when conductor current carrying conductor cuts the flux torque is produced generator conductor cuts the flux only in that con original conductor there is no current is flowing the that is different between generator and motor. Therefore, if you see in this particular diagram circuit diagram we have applied voltage. So, applied voltage it to this motor means that it is it to this, this system we that is why it is called as the motor. So, here you will find that this is a field winding. So, what is the purpose of the field winding is to produce the flux and this and this is the supply to produce the field current. So, as I have changes the field current changes or I have changes the flux changes and this flux is responsible for for this getting the torque 
that then, then when this conductor, conductor here cuts the flux, we get the torque. And now here is the E B a back M F and he is the applied voltage. And now our main purpose is to develop a transfer function model of this servo motor. That is our main purpose is to get theta s by E of s. Now we start describing this. Now what is the first step? The first step we see that this field current because of this field current the flux is produced. And if you consider linear range of magnetization curve, so we write the expression as the flux is proportional to your field current. Flux is proportional to your field current, and here we assume linear range of magnetization curve. Therefore, you write this expression as phi equal to k1 equal to k. This is been replaced by k1. Now, finally, what is the aim of the motor? Aim of the motor is to produce a torque. The torque is proportional to flux and armature current. Therefore, the torque developed by this motor is proportional to where flux into armature current. Now, this is a proportional sign, we can also remove it. So, we can write motor torque equal to k 1 flux into armature current. So, now here this is flux, this flux we already defined. So, what we can do? We can replace the, this flux equation of flux here. So, we will get k k 1 this this actually we take this k f so this k 1 k 1 k f i f into i. So, this flux is proportional to k f into i f, the motor torque is proportional to flux into armature current. So, this flux we are replaced by k f into i f here, k f into i f and this is an armature current. So, in this case what we are doing? We are keeping the field current constant, this current we have to keep constant. Therefore, what we can do? This k 1 is also constant, this k 1 constant, this k f is a constant of this and this i f we have to keep constant. Therefore, this total k 1, k 1, k f i f we replace by another constant. So, T m motor torque equals to equal to k t into i. Let us say this is equation number 1. So, we have got the motor torque. Then, now then about the the back MF. Back MF is very important in motor because the whatever the current flowing in the motor is depends upon this back MF. Because if you see the back MF E B equal to phi Z N sixty P by A. So this expression you might have studied in electrical machine subject that is flux, number of J number of armature conductors, speed, P poles A is the number of parallel path and here this E B is proportional E B is proportional to speed. So, this part you have studied in electrical machines and what is the important role of E B? Important role of E B is, is in the initial current. If you see the any motor the initial current I equal to E minus E b, we can take small E b here E b divided by R a. So, if you start the motor what happen in the finish start the motor speed is very less. So, when the speed is less what is E b? Because E b is proportional to speed therefore, this E b is also less and that is the current is E by R a current is in this case E by R a and this is quite large, but as start the motor as motor gathers speed E b increases the so armature current current decreases. So, this E b in this case is just like a starter it control the armature current. So, now here we have to write down the expression for this E b this E b is proportional to 
d theta by dt because theta is position d theta by dt is speed. Therefore, we removed here a proportionality sign we will get e b equal to k b d theta by dt. This is equation number 2. So, we have got equation number 1 for motor torque, we have got expression for back MF. Now, what are the things which are involved in this motor that is resistor inductor. So, this part we have not covered. So, that part also we have to taken into the expression of the modeling. Therefore, what, what we do? We apply a conventional Kirchhoff's law to this part. So, what expression we will get? E applied voltage equal to L A d i a by d t plus r a into i plus e b. This is equation number 3, this is nothing but your r a into i that is r major resistance into the r major current L a d i by d t plus e b, e b is the back m f. Now, this now this part is completed now coming to this part. So, j moment of inertia and b is friction as we apply the uh, torque is coming in the existence electrical torque, but it has some motions just like if I am walking here walking. So, I have applied my force. So, it is opposed by my inertia my body weight similarly when motor start rotating it has been opposed by the moment of inertia j and also the friction, the friction is with viscous friction last time we have seen this. So, here therefore, here also we can write the expression of, of the torque developed by the motor that is a that is a mechanical torque. So, here we can write the expression like this torque equations j d square theta by d t square plus b d theta by d t equal to t m t and this odd we have derived that is equal to k t into i. Now, this is equation number 4. So, these are equation 1, 2, 3, 4 and this all these equations covered the model of this servo motor. Now, but our main purpose is to get the model in terms of s that is theta s, theta is the position, theta s by E s, e, e of s is the applied voltage. Now, what is the next step? So, it means that we have to apply the Laplace transform to all these equations 1, 2, 3, 4 and doing some mathematical adjustment we have to get theta s by E s. So, whatever thing now I am explained, now again you see it in various steps. So, first step that is torque torque equations, the flux is developed due to the field current. This flux is proportional to field current assuming linear range of magnetization curve. So, flux is proportional to I f. So, flux equals to k f into I f. So, we have seen this expression earlier. So, this is next. This torque is proportional to product of armature current and air gap flux. Therefore, this motor torque equal to armature current into flux. So, this is expression. Then replacing equation 1, this equation 1 in equation 2, this 2. So, we got T m T and here this part is replaced by a constant k t. Therefore, motor torque equal to k t into I. Then equation of armature circuit, differential equation of the armature circuit is determined using Kirchhoff's law which is given below. So, E R A I A L A D I A by D T plus E B. Then third, we know that back M F is proportional to speed. So, E B equal to K B D theta by D T. Then replacing equation 5, this 5 in equation 4, this 4. So, we will get expression as E R A I A L A D I A by D T plus K B into D theta by D T step 3 torque mechanical effect. The electrical torque rotates the load at speed theta dot against the moment of inertia j 
and the viscous friction coefficient b. So, this is given as like this j d square theta by dt square b d theta by dt t m t k t into i. So, this is expression. So, whatever we have explained earlier all this. So, this is represented here all these equations. Now, we have to develop the model in transform function form. So, definitely we have time domain. So, we have to apply Laplace transform. So, here this all these equation I have written again so that we can easily write down the expression in S domain. So, here E so we write Laplace of E E of S R A into I of S the L A this E S I S and this E, e B equals E B of S. Then about this equation number 6 this E B is represented by E B of S and this constant K B and this d theta by dt the theta dot is represented by s theta of s. Then motor torque j d square theta dt square b d theta by dt motor torque is k t into i. So, is here j here j is d square theta dt square that is it is theta you can say dot double dot that is represented by s square theta s then d theta by dt theta dot is represented by s theta s and this t m t of s and here this is k t into i of s now 8 9 and 10 these equations we got. So, what we were doing here you see equation number 8 from this equation 8 we are taking i of s outside. So, we have got this and again we have determined e b of s this is e b of s this equation number 8 and now here equation 9 corresponding to this E B of S and now what we do replacing E B of S here. So, we got I of S like this and again replacing the equation of I of A, A of S in equation number 10 this. So, you will get this equations. So, we will J S square theta S plus B S theta S T M T K T into E S this part. This part is basically your I A of S this I of S and now we are solving cross multiplying taking some elements common and finally, we have reached the expression for G S equal to theta S by E S equal to K T J S plus B R A S L A K T into K B. So, this is a, a transfer function model of a DC servo motor which is in in uh, armature control mode and again we will find that it has one pole at origin this is a type 1 system and here open one open loop plant here for the position control is not stable this is the one important point we can observe. So, all the stability issues regarding this one we will see later on, but just know that this modeling issues has come. So, this is very important point to be noted. Sometimes instead of position we require a speed control. So, in that case how to, how will you get the model? So, we have got the model like this this is the third order model C here S S S, but if you go for the speed control can we get the same third order model or can we get the fourth order model? Now, this need to be verified therefore, now we, we are doing here the model of a DC servo motor armature control that is basically speed control model speed model. So, theta of s is position. So, s theta of s velocity. So, time domain theta t h domain theta of theta of s then time domain get a theta of d h domain equals to s theta of s. This is for the position and this is for velocity. So, g s position equal to theta s by s equal to k, k t s j s plus b r a s l a k t k b that is same expression this expression. And when we are moving to the speed so, what will happen to the speed here s theta is by s that means, your s is cancelled and you will find that the model of a DC servo motor that is that is a speed control model is second order whereas, the position is third order and we will find that 
this model this is second order system and you know that when all the coefficient are positive the system is other stable. So, all these are positive if positive this model is in a stable model that is open loop stable and whereas, this is open loop a stable model and this is third order that is armature control model is particularly position control model is third order whereas, peak control model is second order model. Now, you just see the block diagram of a position control DC servo motor you will find that this is 1 by LAS by RA. That means, if you see the original figure as we apply input, input it has to move towards RA and LA and because of this RA and LA the current is flowing and this current flowing and because of the current flowing a torque is produced and torque is opposed by this G and B. Therefore, first of all we write down we have written the expression for L A S R A then this is constant rotor on constant we have got a torque and that torque is opposed by 1 by J S plus B and this is the back M F and if you want a speed a position we got theta s 1 by s. So, this E O E A of S input opposed by back M F and because of that current is flowing which drive through this L S by R A then is a motor torque constant. So, that means, the motor torque is produced and that has to drive the motor against 1 upon 1 by 1 by J S plus B this is the velocity and this is we can say a position. The block diagram of a velocity control DC motor same thing, but we are done here here theta dot s same 1 by L s R a k t j s plus b and this is k b. Now, the simplified form of transfer function model as I have seen that the model that is a position control model is third order. In control literature we will see that there are various model orientation techniques are available they can reduce the model higher order to lower order model. So, there are some techniques are available, but can we do that from model itself just looking after it can it reduce to second order or first order without using any techniques. So, just see the model here in this model we have g position is s j s plus b r a s l a k t k b, but you know if you take the armature inductance inductance of armature is very small. So, that we can neglect it. So, here we have neglected this L a. So, what we have written here inductance L a is usually small therefore, it can be neglected. So, here after neglecting L a and you will find we get this expression again we have some modified this one and finally, the position control model we have got like this and here this B k t by k a k is replaced by another constant. So, here G position as equal to k t by r a j square s p k t k b r a that equal to k t r a j square b 0 s where b 0 equal to b k t k b r that means, this b 0 is like this. So, b is the friction which opposes the motion. So, what will happen here k t k b they are responsible for the back m f. So, what happened because of this back m f the fixed plus friction is also increases. So, above equation indicates that the back m f of the motor increases viscous friction of the motor. So, in above equation B 0 increases the viscous friction of the system and again it has been simplified and we have got the k m equals to k t B 0 by R a motor gain constant and tau m j B 0 motor time constant. So, that is the and simplified model of an armature control DC servo motor particularly this is a your position control model and if you want a speed control model. So, we will get we can write down as k m tau m s plus 1. So, this is model is a speed control and this speed control model it reduced to first order. So, see here this is a motor and this particular motor model we are used to only first order particular speed whereas, in case of position control it become a second order model and therefore, suppose in motor what is the requirement requirement is for speed suppose we want a speed of 1500 rpm and suppose we are not getting exact speed. So, what we are doing we are we design a controller. 
So, at that time this model which you have determined now this is helpful in the designing of the controller. Now, this is the model which is concerned with the transfer function, but now we are running the advanced control for the advanced control the we are using the state space modeling. So, in the state space model we have seen that based on the system we have to assume the state variable. So, here now the state space presentation of an armature control DC motor that is same system which we have determined earlier. So, we have to determine its uh, space space model. So, what we have done theta s by s equal to k m s term m s plus 1. So, now you have done cross multiplication. So, this is cross multiplication after that after solving this we have got tau m theta dot t plus theta dot t equal to k m into e of t. In above equation we write output as a first state variable and other variable as the derivative of the output variable. So, here we have taken x 1 of t equal to theta of t, x 2 of t equal to theta dot t, then x 2 dot of t equal to theta double dot t. So, because why? Because here we require theta dot t, therefore x 1 of t equal to x 2 of t and therefore, after solving this that is our this equation, this particular equations we come across the value of x 2 dot t is like this. And finally, this model has been presented in a companion form or controllable canonic form. So, we have got this particular result. That means, we have started with the transfer function model that is a classical approach and from classical approach we have developed and stay space model. So, this is a one type of approach, but in sometimes we can design a model or we can develop the model based on the variable which is involved in our system. As we have seen last the earlier classes that we have to consider the variable as the energy storage element or very important variables. So, here we will now develop the model of a DC servo motor in a state space considering the variables. And we will see is there any difference. So, first of all we will we will consider state variables. So, in this case let us say step 1 selection of state variables. The state variable selected as position, speed and the armature current. So, there are 3 state variables because we have got expression in terms of d theta by d t, d square theta by d t square and armature current is also very is important here. Therefore, we have considered these 3 state variables and we have already determined the equation for armature circuit back m f and the torque equation of a motor with reference to the moment of inertia and the friction. So, these are 3 equations and now these variables we have to adjust it in this equations. Now, derivation of state space equation. So, we write x 1 dot equal to x 2 d theta by d t then x 2 dot equal to d square theta by d t square. Now, this expression j d square theta by d t square b d theta by d t equal to t m t t means motor torque constant that is equal to k t into i. So, here g d square theta by d t square replaced by x 2 dot see here this then d theta by d t this is d theta by d t equal to x 2 we replace by x 2 and here k t into i into x 3 and now after solving these equations we have got this x 2 dot equal to minus b by j x 2 plus k t by j into x 3. Now, this is an equation for an armature circuit sorry e r a into i l a d i by d t plus k b d theta by d t and now again we have taken this this part here and other part of right sides right side we have got this and again replacing the all the state variables we have got expression for x t dot like this. Now, the state space model of an armature control DC servo motor can be written like this. So, same x 1 dot x 2 dot x t dot that means, whatever we have determined here x 1 dot x 2 dot x t dot that is x 1 dot x 2 dot x t dot we have written like this and from this x 1 dot equal to x 2. So, here 0 1 0 or the input is 0 then x 2 dot equals to minus b by j x 2 here x 1 term is 0 here self it is 0 and here k t by j x 
then x t dot this x t dot equal to. So, is there term of x 1 just see here see x 3 x 2 again here term of x 1 is 0 therefore, we are replaced by 0 and here term of x 2 we are written as minus k b by l a and this term of x 3 we are replaced by r a by l a and here particularly 1 by l a is replaced by like this. Suppose, the output is motor angle therefore, it can be written as y equal to theta theta is x 1 and this is expression. Now, here we want output should be this is like a speed just like position we have taken now it is speed. Now, we have variables we have to change. So, here now my variable is x 1 equal to omega equal to d theta by d t that is the first variable d theta. there is no need for position variable here we, because we require speed. If you want position we may have taken x 1 equal to theta which we have seen last time, but here our purpose is to speed therefore, what we have done we have taken d theta by d t equal to x 1 and second variable because we have to control armature also armature current therefore, x 2 equal to i and therefore, we write in the expression g a d theta d t square b d theta by d t motor torque k 2 into i and now here d theta by d t equal to omega. So, it has been replaced like this j d omega by d t b into omega k 2 i into x 2 and here j x 1 dot b x 1 k 2 into x 2 and now this equation is solved. Then equation for of an armature circuit E R A what is I I into x 2 L A D I by d t x 2 dot and k b into d theta by d t equal to, equal to omega. So, we have written omega and again we have solved it we have got this equation and from this we have got this the x 2 dot equal to minus k b by L A x 1 minus R A by L A x 2 plus E by L A. So, this is the expression. So, state space model is given as like this. Just see here we have got two state space model. One state space model we have determined from the transfer function approach and one state space model we have determined by this by this actual approach that is actual state space approach. Then can we get the same result or can we get the same roots of the matrix that is matrix A this is matrix A and earlier also we have determined this is matrix. So, this is matrix A we have determined. So, can we get the same eigen value or same performance? So, this is a very important issue. So, in future when we learn the stability and performance we will again come with this modeling part or again we take this model and we check the performance, but here for modeling point of view we have got models. So, that means the state space model we can determine from the given transfer function or we can determine from the state space models. Now, these are some references. Thank you.